Hey, where do you think you're going? Hey, man, Mike's studying. I don't want to bother him. Yeah, well, you get back in there and finish, man. <laughs> well, see, in this house, people study when they're supposed to. Good thing I'm not a member of this house. Well, you are this weekend. What's that supposed to mean? Well, you heard of the extended family? Well, this weekend, you parted one, which gives me the right to extend this belt to your behind if I feel like... I'd like to see that. Oh, you would, huh? Well, anything to oblige a guest, mister. Oh, man, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, come on in here. Oh, you, you must be crazy. I don't believe this. I'm gonna make a believer out of you. James! Huh? Hey, no, you, you know the boy it. got it. Come on, get your behind. You me. I hope your father doesn't go overboard. Mama, you think daddy really gonna give Eddie a spanking? Is a bean green. <laughs> Can James Brown get down? Is your head dead? a 6.5 on the Richter scale. Well, you know how your father is about studying. He means business. The question is, which beating did he get? Well, as we all know, Dad has three in his repertoire. <laughs> the regular, the super, and the big Mac. <laughs> the big Mac is right. It can really warm your bun. That make you feel good. Didn't make me feel bad. <laughs> Nobody ever spiked me before. Yeah, uh, that's because we just met. <laughs> Somebody should a long time ago. I got news for you. I held back on you, mister. Best holding back. I hate to be around when you let go. Yeah, well, my own kids would have got a lot worse. They would? You know it. <laughs> Well, one thing we know for sure, he didn't get the Big Mac. <laughs> He's still walking. Hey, Eddie, my father really laid it on you, huh? Yeah, he laid it on. I thought stuff like this only happened in the movies. Are you kidding, man? One time I didn't do my homework, and my father did some homework on me. <laughs> I don't get that. Ooh. <laughs> Looks like he got the Big Mac after all. <laughs> What you want, man? Another piece of me? Don't worry, I'm split. You ain't got to go, Eddie. You can stay if you want to. Eddie, there's something you've got to understand. Now, we discipline our kids because we love them. If we didn't love them, we wouldn't take the time. He don't love me. How do you know? Come on. Loving is caring, Eddie. You don't have to be a member of this family for us to care about you. That's right. My father could have thrown you out a long time ago. Sure could have. How come you didn't? You could save me from running out. Well, Eddie, it might be because I do care a little. You what? I said it might be because I do care a little. I didn't know somebody could beat on you and care at the same time. Michael, what page did you say we was on again? 73, chapter 6, man. And this is what I call the lost art, the forgotten art of disciplining your children. I, I can't even remember the last time I've heard of any kid getting the belt or even being spanked. Can't remember, right? Because now we're living in this culture where it's like, no, you can't do that. Self-esteem. It's more important than self-esteem. Got to give them a participation trophy. And look at the result of that. Now those kids are adults and we have a bunch of spoiled, rotten children out there that are now adults um, wanting respect 
and wanting accolades and wanting congratulations for accomplishing nothing, right? We had just have a whole generation of young adults right now, well, some of them are even in their early 30s, that uh, are basically part of that participation trophy generation, that self-esteem movement, as they used to call it, right? I'm old enough to remember that, the self-esteem movement. You have a bunch of adults running out there, young adults, that have no humility, very low self-awareness, okay? But a lot of self-esteem, a lot of pride. For what? What did you do, right? Because back in the day, if you're part of my generation or older, right, you needed to actually accomplish something in order to get any type of congratulations, any type of reward, any type of accolades. If you had to do something, right? And you had to do something that was worthy of that. And if you did it, guess what? You're invisible. Nobody cared about you. Or people call you a loser. Right? And that is all thanks to the woke parenting that we have these days and uh, the lack of discipline, the lack of uh, child rearing for the most part, right? And you saw that clip there that I shared with you. That was from a TV show back in the 70s called Good Times. You guys used to watch Good Times, <laughs> part of my generation. And uh, that was of the father, James Evan, before they killed him off, which was not cool, but they before they killed him off, he was uh, the dad. And uh, if you don't know the uh, backstory on this TV show, uh, the first person cast was the mom, and originally it was going to be about a single mom. Do you believe that? Back in the 70s, they, were, they wanted to push this. Network already wanted to push the single motherhood stuff. And she put her foot down, and she was like, I'm not doing it unless you give me a husband. I don't want to show the American public that this is okay behavior. I want to have a husband, and I want my children, on my TV children, to have a father. So they casted John Amos, a.k.a. James Evans, to be the dad. And he was a very strict disciplinarian type of dad, the type of dad that really we used to have back in the day, really that kept kids in line. And, you know, enough to where these kids grew up, with humility. And you know, and you notice there's like a difference between, I notice this, you know, just because I'm really perceptive to this stuff, but I notice the difference between like my friends that I grew up with, say in high school and whatnot. I just remember the way we were back then um, versus the kids that I see in high school today, right? Like back then, like me and my friends, um, there was just a lot of humility, right? And there was a lot of like, ability to laugh at ourselves we never took anything seriously there were a lot there were lots of like shots we took at each other right just boys being boys name calling even girls like doing it like we took shots at girls they took shots at us right and it was just kind of like we live by the motto um sticks and stones may break my bones but names will never hurt me you guys remember that teacher used to say that all the time like if you go to the teacher back then you're like hey you call me a name teacher would be like sticks and stones May break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Nowadays, like, what? You said what? You didn't call him by their proper gender pronoun? Put him in jail. And literally, they're putting people in jail in uh, certain countries if you don't call someone by their proper, you know, whatever. I mean, you could do it accidentally and end up in jail, you know? So uh, I think it's like Canada doing that. But I, I had a buddy that uh, just moved uh, out of Canada, and I think that was part of the big reason. In any case, there's that lack of parental discipline that is very, very apparent with uh, today's youth that I've noticed. And there's a very, very uh, obvious lack of humility with a lot of kids today. Like, uh, I was just talking about high school kids, but uh, high school kids today, I just, I, sometimes I'm just kind of blown away at times, right? Because my niece is going to be entering high school. So kind of like seeing some of her friends, not her friends in particular, but other kids at that school and kind of like, why is this kid talking like he, you know, like he's like some accomplished doctor or surgeon or, you know, he's saving lives out there. He's like this multi-zillionaire business owner. This kid's like 12 years old. <laughs> when you're 12, you're kind of like, okay, I'm just a child, I'm just a kid, and the adults are in charge. But now you've got these kids thinking they know better 
than the adults, right? You, I know you guys have seen that too. You've seen a lot of these little snots who are like as young as 11, 12 years old thinking they know better than the adults. And then you have these woke adults out there who are encouraging these kids and building up their self-esteem even more to believe that they do know better than adults. And it's like, no, dude, you don't. You're just a little snot. And uh, it wasn't too long ago you were in Pampers. And no, you need a little humility, right, until you actually go out there and prove yourself. Okay, if you have no results, then you need to STFU. Right, that's how we did it back in the day. You need to shut up until you get some results. But this is how we get a lot of these uh, like online trolls too, right? You get these online trolls who think they know better. And it's like, ah, me, me, me. Or back in the day, you couldn't do that. Because the only way to troll somebody back in the day was to their face. And if you did that, you'd probably get punched in the face. So a lot of kids who have a smart mouth used to shut up, right? <laughs> because it's like, dude, you might get punched in the face. I think it was Mike Tyson who said... Uh, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face, <laughs> All right? But we're missing, we're lacking that uh, parental discipline that we did have back, way back in the day, right? And I had to go all the way back to the 70s to get a clip like this, right? I had to go all the way back to the 70s, but this is the kind of stuff that was on TV back then. Do you think this stuff would, you think this, this same clip would be on TV today? No, no. They wouldn't show this clip today. Right. I'm surprised it's still on YouTube and I was able to, to snag it. But they would not show a clip like that today because it sends the wrong message. Um, but most people who are at least part of Generation X and older, uh, you got spanked. You probably got the belt, right? I got the belt. I got the belt from my dad a lot and I still got in trouble. Right? I still got in trouble. But I always think like how much more worse trouble I would have gotten in had my dad not spanked me or you know given the belt not just me but my brothers my sisters and this was pretty common because back then you would go to school and uh some of your friends talk about it like man my dad hit me yesterday he was like oh he didn't he didn't hold back and like some kids wouldn't be able to sit and they'd be like oh my gosh you know it was so hard i'm like what did you do man what did you do and they're like well yeah i broke a glass of the house he told me not to play with a slingshot and i broke a glass in my house and uh, I'm like, okay, well, there you go. <laughs> you did something. It's not like he just came in your room and belted you or spanked you. Um, however, at the end of uh, your spanking, your dad would always make sure you knew, at least my dad did, like, hey, you know, I didn't want to do that to you. I'm sorry if it hurt you, uh, but I had to do it. You understand, right? I mean, I remember my dad would just, like, after he's done, like, just lashing out at me with a belt, like, he would sit down, like, a few minutes later, after it was all done, after I was done crying, he'd come in my room and just put his arm around me and say, I had to do that. You understand, right? And he would let me know. I'm like, why? What did I do? It was like, well, I told you not to do that like two or three times. And you still did it. And he was like, I, I only want to have to tell you once. Okay? If I tell you once, don't do it. Just don't do it. And I, so that started to click in my head, right? I was like, okay. <laughs> you know, but uh, my dad would always like, you know, and he didn't have to, I mean, he would apologize. And I'm like, okay, maybe, you know, now as I'm, a, now that I'm an adult, I, if that was me, I, I probably would not apologize. And I would just say, Hey, I, I had to do that. Right. You understand. All right. But my dad had a little more, you know, he would feel bad. He would really feel bad after. And he would like say, sorry. Uh, so yeah, my dad was kind of like part James Evans and part Ward Cleaver. You guys remember Ward Cleaver from Leave it to Beaver? Um, yeah, because Ward could, uh, you know, he could let the beaver have it from time to time. But uh, my dad was part Ward Cleaver and part James Evans. Probably more James Evans because we didn't have a whole lot of money growing up. So my dad was usually pretty stressed. He worked two jobs and uh, he was like loading docks. Back then he was blue collar. So he was always like doing shipping and receiving. He was always, I remember he was always picking up heavy boxes and loading trucks and stuff like that. And that was my memory from childhood because he took me to work with him a few times and I'm like, wow, this is hard labor. And my dad would always be like, you know, you're not going to do this when you grow up. I don't want you doing this. You know, that's why you got to go to school and you got to do this and get good grades and blah, 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 blah. You know, so, um, and then when I wouldn't get good grades, uh, he, the belt was coming. So, and I sucked at school. I mean, I did not have the best grades in school and I used to get bored out of my mind sitting in class. I used to look at that clock ticking, like every second, I'm like, man, well, how long is this class going to last? And 
I just did not enjoy school. I enjoyed, I enjoyed the extracurricular activities like sports and prom and all that, but I just did not enjoy school. But my dad would always, always kind of warn me like with his belt in his hand, like, you're going to have a good report card, right? And I'm like, I hope so. <laughs> he was like, okay, got this waiting for you. If you don't have a good report card, he's like, I don't want to hear it. You know, so uh, there was always that sense of fear. Like, okay, I better get this done. And it's, it's a type of fear and it's a type, this is a type of like disciplining, by the way, that a mom cannot instill in their kids, especially their boys, right? She just can't really do that because moms, I, women by nature are not uh, disciplinarians. They're not authoritarians. Uh, the father is, right? Like most moms don't set boundaries with their kids. This is why a lot of single moms, their kids end up becoming criminals, 83% according to government statistics. 83% uh, of violent criminals in jail and prison today are from single mother households. Why does that happen? It's because um, single moms, well, females in general, not just single moms, but uh, they're very bad at establishing boundaries for their children. Right? It's like, oh, my children, I got to nurture them, I got to hug them, I got to love them. They don't establish those boundaries, whereas the father does, right? You're a disciplinarian, that's part of your job, is to establish those boundaries. And when you don't, your kid goes out there into the world and becomes a terror in society, just becomes a menace to society. Good movie, by the way, 1993. Uh, but he just becomes a menace in society out there. This is why boundaries are important. And... You know, unfortunately, these days, um, most, not most, but a lot of fathers out there are buying into this, like, woke parenting nonsense, and they're just taking it too easy too easy on their kids, and they're trying to be part of this self-esteem movement that I wish died off a long time ago, and, uh, you know, now their kids are growing up in this world, and they're becoming adults, and they're struggling. A lot of these kids just, I mean, the first sign of, like, rejection, they can't take it, they go home, they cry. Uh, they don't get back up, back out there and compete like you're supposed to, right? They don't, they can't break through challenges. So, um, you know, and I have some relatives like this who are younger than me that, you know, I mean, even my own relatives like fell prey to this where it's like, oh my gosh, how did you, you know, how do you get through these rejections and how do you get these jobs? And oh my gosh, they, everyone, every place, everywhere I go, they're, they've kind of adopted this nihilistic poor me, victim mentality type of uh, attitudes because they were never properly disciplined as children and never actually told like, hey, you know, the world's not a nice place. It's not going to treat you nice. Uh, you better learn how to compete and you better learn how to listen. You better learn when to shut up. And uh, if you don't have accomplishments, uh, there's no participation trophy for you, right? There was no participation trophy in my generation either. So, um, but yeah, yeah, anyway... Drop your comments below, guys. Let me know what you think of tonight's coaching video. If you have kids yourself, um, let me know your parenting style and how you discipline them. Uh, I'm always happy to hear what your, uh, what your experiences are as a parent. Uh, drop your comments below. Share anything I might have missed below. Or if you're just a fan of good times, show your, share some uh, comments below, your favorite episodes. Until next time. As always, this is Matt Cross from Alpha Male Secrets signing out here from top of Vegas. Got an excellent view of the Eiffel Tower. It's about the middle of the day here, so it's pretty bright. In any case, don't forget to smash that like button below. Go ahead and smash it right now. Do it for me. Do it for Vegas. Do it for Cash and Gizmo. Just smash that like button, fellas. Also, make sure you hit that notification bell right next to it so that you are notified whenever I release a brand new coaching video here on my YouTube channel. More importantly, guys, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. It helps me out a ton when you actually subscribe to my channel, so please subscribe to my channel as well. And for all of you guys who want to support my work and all of this red pill, gold pill, and platinum pill content that I am teaching you even further, the best way to do that is by becoming a premium subscriber of my premium Alpha Male Secrets channel, which I am hosting on a private platform away from YouTube. And the reason I am doing that, obviously, is to protect my content 
from YouTube in the event that one day they try to shut me down. My premium alpha male secrets content will be protected and it will be on this private platform. And this is the absolute best way to support my work. And right now it's only one buck for the entire first month of premium alpha male secrets coaching lessons from me. So take advantage of it. Who can't afford a dollar? And again, this is the absolute best way to support my work. So it's real easy to get signed up. All you need to do is click the link below in my description box. It will take you over to my website where you could get signed up right now. It just takes two seconds. So do that now and I will see you in my next coaching video. As I mess up the ending there. Anyway, got the Eiffel Tower behind me. Got Bellagio right back there if you could see it. And uh, the Paris Hotel. Aria in the distance. Uh, Planet Hollywood up here. You can kind of see it in the vague distance, as well as the Luxor way back there, the pyramid, and uh, just got a great shot here. There's a pool down below, and uh, fortunately got this room last minute. Been out here for the entire month now, so uh, closing up my stay pretty soon. It's been a little over a month, and I think I'm ready to go home, go back to L.A., but I uh, always love to share this with you guys, and uh, if you've never been out here, it's definitely worth the trip, okay? It's definitely worth the trip. A lot of you guys are like, hey, why do you keep going out to Vegas? And uh, the main reason is because A, it's only three hours from LA, and B, uh, I do private uh, boot camps out here from time to time. It's the only place where they're not really checking for the uh, little passports, you know what I mean. <sighs> but I always miss this view when I'm not here. So, until next time.